and today I'm going to detail the association between an overgrowth of candida and oxalates, which is a particular kind of anti-nutrient found in many natural foods, most famously dark leafy greens. Normally, most oxalates, either dietary or those produced by the body as a waste product, are either excreted through the urine and or metabolized in the gut. And there's actually a specific gut microbe called Oxalobacter formingis that consumes oxalates exclusively as a primary fuel source. And so right here you can see possibly the first indication that the condition of the gut microbiome is related directly to the amount of oxalates in the body. Because an overgrowth of candida, the most common yeast in the GI tract, can cause intestinal permeability, also known as leaky gut syndrome, and this can greatly facilitate the transport of dietary oxalates first into the bloodstream and then eventually to the kidneys and elsewhere where these excessive oxalates can form into painful crystals which you can think of like shards of broken glass. While Oxalobacter formingis survives exclusively on oxalates, several strains of Lactobacillus and Bifidobacteria can also metabolize oxalates. And because all of these strains are extremely sensitive to antibiotics, this is yet another reason why dysbiosis of any degree can lead to oxalate-induced kidney stones and candida overgrowth. So what can we do about this? One of the easiest ways to improve oxalate clearance is simply to drink more water throughout the day. But beyond that, you would also benefit from regularly taking magnesium, which reduces the growth and proliferation of oxalate crystals, while also serving as a required cofactor for the detoxification of numerous candida byproducts, one of which is uric acid, which itself can promote kidney stone formation. And while there are plenty of magnesium preparations available, magnesium orotate would really be the best for supporting gut health in this case, because the erotic acid that magnesium orotate is bound to supports the growth of lactobacillus bacteria in the gut, which, again, like oxalobacter formingis, also breaks down oxalic acid. Also, try pairing your magnesium with some vitamin B6, which promotes both intestinal magnesium absorption and also increased urinary excretion of oxalates. Regular intake of magnesium in general also supports the growth of bifidobacteria, which digest fiber, and this is particularly important because a large amount of undigested fiber sitting in the large intestine can easily spark a candida overgrowth. The digestive enzymes cellulase and protease break down fiber and protein respectively, and when these two enzymes are taken in high quantities on an empty stomach, the cellulase enzyme will digest candida's outer cell wall, made of a dense plant substance called chitin, while the protease enzyme digests candida's inner cell wall and also the countless toxins expelled as the candida cell dies. Finally, the herb chunka piedra, known also as phylanthus, or more infamously, the stone breaker, can block calcium oxalate crystals from entering and accumulating in the kidneys. It's well known that sugar and refined carbohydrates are the primary dietary fuel source for a candida overgrowth while also accelerating the dehydration and mineral disruption that can lead to oxalate retention and kidney stones. So if you're dealing with any degree of a candida infection, then removing these hyperinflammatory foods is the best place to begin. But as always with candida, you need to be patient and persistent because an overgrowth can take its time to manifest outwardly and it definitely takes its time to leave even when treating it every day. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzymental. Stay healthy.